when we speak of energy transition, we're really looking into different technologies, different sectors. So we're talking about a range of industries like electric vehicle cars, green infrastructure, we're talking about battery storage, we're talking about lithium batteries, fuel cells, as well as photovoltaic panels, you know, PV panels, and um, wind power, wind turbines. Each of these um, industry demands specific types of metals. In many cases, metals are concentrated in three regions, in Latin America, in Africa, and most of the critical minerals that we, we call them critical minerals, they're in China. So for example, to produce permanent magnets that we need for electric vehicle cars and wind turbines, we would need rare earth elements such as neodymium, praseodymium, samarium. These rare earth elements at the moment, 90% of them, 90-95% are currently controlled by China, so produced and processed in China. There are also base metals that we need, for example, iron, copper, aluminum, nickel. These metals, we call them base metals, we get them from different mining countries, but we need them across different sectors because to build infrastructure, you would need steel, you would need iron, etc. In the case of critical minerals, when it is properly managed, there is an opportunity to ensure public goods and new infrastructures that are resilient and um, that can contribute to enhance the resilience of communities uh, to climate change because for extracting the materials you need infrastructures to transport and if these infrastructures benefit the communities where the explorations are located but all of these if you put special safeguards and environmental social and governance standards to prevent related risks. The increased demand for critical materials can pose environmental, social, conflict and economic risks, uh, especially for the communities and the owners of the resources in the areas in the Global South. You have economic risks, so there could be a higher vulnerability on commodity prices for the owners of the supplies when they are completely dependent on these economies. Environmental risks are those related to deforestation and the consequent habitat destruction and loss of biodiversity in the areas where mining operations occur. Water pollution, which is particularly important for climate security because polluting water sources in areas that are already affected by water scarcity or climate-driven water scarcity, then increase the vulnerabilities uh, to climate change. And of course, there is also uh, green gas house emissions related to the mining. Then there is also social risks, and the social risks come from displacement of local population, mainly indigenous, when the land rights are not uh, taken into account. And it also creates a loss of identity from the livelihoods depending on ecosystems, connectivity in these areas. And it comes also with loss of traditional cultures. Then you have conflict risks, and this is driven by an increased uh, competition over the resource control in the areas. And also, there can be opposition to mining activities in general because of the perceived risks of uh, losing land and water, um, which are scarce resources in some areas. Implementing an approach of climate security implies building dialogue platforms where really the communities have a, a voice on the decision making and also actually to really decide on, on uh, what the revenues are going to and um, but also having an approach that is called the mitigation hierarchy which has four stages so the first one is avoidance and that is cutting the demand upstream so whenever it's possible not mining virgin resources, but reducing the demand by recycling and finding other technological solutions. Then to avoid the actual damage to the ecosystem, especially the water balance in fragile ecosystems. And then you can also pay for the restoration of the damage of the particular ecosystem, or also you can compensate by restoring other ecosystems that have similar characteristics. 
when you talk about legislation for climate security, um, integrating climate security and critical minerals mining, um, there is a, a first point, which is there is a need for updating mining codes and ensuring a fairer distribution of revenues and royalties. Beyond legislation, there's also a need to improve the capabilities at the national and local level in the judicial powers to ensure the prosecution and to ensure that the companies pay for their ecological liabilities. So, and for this, you need also capacities in collecting baseline data of water, of ecosystems, integrate the communities into collecting data and have independent research to really follow the impacts of the actual mining operations. What you need to do is to actually implement the legislations and have the capabilities to prosecute um, the liabilities of the mining companies, which also will increase transparency and will increase uh, a better improvement of the whole industry.